wall-to-wall -wall blue skies here in Arizona. Telescope making in paradise. I'm about to do a glue up on this altitude bearing from one of our Renegade telescopes. So this one actually comes from an 18 inch Renegade and uh, today's the day to get it put together. Now all of the parts for a bearing are cut on our CMC machine. You can see there's quite a bit of engineering and detail uh, that goes on one. Now in your typical bearing for a telescope, a Dobsonian from another manufacturer, the bearing will be one piece of three quarter inch plywood normally. Uh, I'm not aware of any manufacturer that uses any more than that. But for an 18 inch Renegade, we have actually four pieces in a bearing. And each one of the pieces has a little bit different job and is engineered a little bit differently. Now the outside piece on this one is uh, blank on the outside. You can see that there's no, no uh, holes or, or any detail in there. Uh, the next le level in though is the actual bearing surface itself. This is where we actually have the uh, ebony star laminate glued onto this piece of uh, the plywood. You can also see some other features here. We've got a bunch of holes drilled in here and these holes were put in place on the CNC machine. Now the CNC machine is accurate to about a thousandth of an inch or maybe a little better than that. So I use this technique of drilling these holes to give us perfect alignment. Now if you look on the other side of this piece, it has the matching holes. And so by using pins, which are actually just quarter inch dowels, you can drop those in the hole. And then when you use, uh, this piece has five aligned holes. When you get five pins in there, you can put the thing together and you will get exact perfect alignment of all four of these pieces. On top of the perfect alignment, it really helps during the glue up because the pieces with the pins in there cannot move around. And one of the trouble with glue ups is you'll put the glue in there, put the two pieces together. When you try to clamp them, they'll shift against each other. But with this technique using this, these pins, the pieces can't shift and you get literally a perfect uh, alignment every time. Uh, the CNC machine also puts in a T-slot here for me. And uh, I use some epoxy to put a square nut down inside there. It's of course perfectly sized for the square nut. There's two of them in each uh, bearing, and what they're used for, the uh, mirror housing actually seats into this slot, and then uh, it has a hole in it, and you just use a, a normal uh, bolt with a handle on it here like this, and it'll seat right in there, and uh, perfectly aligned and square because of the CNC machine, but two of those hold the uh, mirror enclosure assembly on top of this bearing. So once again, that's put in by the CNC machine at cutting time. Uh, this layer also has a neat feature uh, on the end of the laminate here. Let's see if I can get it around the right direction. Uh, the CNC machine, the design has an end plate on it here. So the telescope, when you go all the way down or already, all the way down or all the way up, hits on that with the, uh, uh, the oh, heck of a bird, uh, hits on that with the uh, Teflon and that stops the motion of the telescope and thus the telescope can't uh, go too far forward or too far uh, back in its motion. So it's a nice safety feature that's kind of automatically in place there. So the second layer here is kind of complex with the holes, the nuts, the indent, and the uh, ebony star in there. The uh, third layer is a little bit different. This one has the alignment holes again. Uh, you'll notice that this piece with the laminate on it is thinner. It's a half an inch thinner than the piece underneath it. And the reason for that is that our Teflon runs on uh, some supports, uh, little pieces of Teflon, and the whole support goes up in there. And that's what keeps the telescope uh, in, in alignment and everything when you're using it and gives it the good motion. So this piece is thinner than the piece, pieces that surround it. Uh, to give the, the proper capture and motion of the system. And the way it's built, you can just lift this whole assembly straight up off the, the supports uh, for storage or for movement. So on this next layer down, in addition to the holes, uh, I put a really thin uh, area here, which the CNC machine takes off. I only take off about, uh, oh, I don't know, 100 or 11 thou, maybe, or 110 thou maybe. So, uh, excuse me, 11 thou off it. And uh, that gives me a little inset 
so that uh, the wooden part of the bearing support can get in there without rubbing. Otherwise, you'd have two pieces separated by a three-quarter inch piece, and the three-quarter inch piece wouldn't be able to easily go up inside there. And the bottom piece is pretty simple again. It has alignment holes again, and the general shape. And of course, being on the outside, this one's blind on the outside. So once again, the CNC machine lets you design the hole to only go to a certain depth. And because of that, you don't see this construction detail on the outside of the telescope. You get a nice pure face there uh, with just the, the beauty of the wood itself. So that's how one of these bearings is assembled together. To do the glue up, basically I start on one side, uh, pop it over, put the pegs in, the alignment pins, do all those, and then just uh, put the glue down. Next one, glue. Next one, pins and glue. And so I've got the whole thing done, and then I just clamp it uh, with these clamps on the edge of my uh, tabletop here. And a uh, very nice, easy setup with the four layers. It stays flush and flat and goes together in a, in a jiffy. It, so it's really smooth and easy and uh, gives us a really strong bearing with the four layers. There's no, uh, with the thickness we've got here, two inches thick on the, on the outer parts, we don't get any flexure on the bearing to speak of, and uh, the strength of it is just amazing. Plus, the whole assembly, assembly is incredibly strong because there's such a huge glue-up area. Uh, so we're very happy with the bearing. The performance of it is good. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the size of this bearing. Uh, and typically, on a Dobsonian, your bearing, the diameter of the bearing, is usually about the same as the mirror size. So you'd expect on an 18 inch telescope, the bearing would be about 18 inches in diameter. Uh, this one though, on our Renegades, this one's about 33 inches. And by making it so big, you get an incredible benefit in having the telescope balance. When we finish up a Renegade, you can put a tiny little eyepiece in there, it'll hold anywhere you wanna go, it's not back heavy and you can uh, observe some particular object at the telescope where you want it to be, take out that little tiny eyepiece, put a great big uh, paracore and a, and a 31 millimeter, 35 millimeter in there, and that telescope won't move because the balance is so good on it. So having these big, huge bearings is a huge benefit uh, on a Renegade, and, and one of the things we're really proudest of because it gives us a huge performance benefit over the other Dobsonians. I usually use a foam brush to apply tight bond 3 glue because it gives me a little longer application time here in dry Arizona weather. After the glue has been applied, I use a lot of clamps to clamp together the four layers. I use my finishing sander because it has a nice flat surface to clamp down on to make sure the bearing's perfect. Sanding is one of the most important steps to giving the Renegade that really silky smooth surface that I like. I use several different mechanical sanders. This is an oscillating spindle sander that I use for rough sanding the curves. The round end of it is great for doing the in, inside and outside curves, and then the flat side is good for the uh, few flat parts that are on this particular piece. In addition, I use a finishing drum sander that I just built, and I use that for larger flat surfaces. I also use a random orbit palm sander quite a bit. Uh, especially on the end grain with finer sandpaper. The general sequence I run is number 80, then 120, and 220, and then I save the 320 just for that end grain. 